He's got a lot of traffic in front of him, but being the veteran he is, he'll keep that car out of trouble. Whoa, some contact in turn one. Everybody's bunching up Trevor Monahan in the 13. There's Dexter Stacy in the 55 for 10th spot on the racetrack. Ron Sheridan and the total lubricants number 52 to the inside trying to duck out of the trouble there. But I think what started that, the 99 of Derek White got awfully loose off the corner. Just everybody started bunching up behind. Fitzpatrick all kinds of loose up off the corner, chasing the lead. He's chasing that 19 of Brad Graham. The 95 of Anthony Simone unable to hang on on the outside. He's sliding back a number of positions. Loses one to the four home hardware Chevy of Don Thompson Jr. Now Pete Shepard in that national exhaust number seven. Doesn't appear to be damaged too badly. A lot of bodywork damage, but as far as mechanical aspects go, it seems to be working pretty well. Shepard very lucky. She went over the left front and did no damage to the control arms, the shock, and the steering because that car is right back up to full song. J.R. Fitzpatrick going for the lead. And it looks like he will pick it up down the back straightaway. The car owner for the 19, Reg Arsenault, should be ecstatic, though, with the way that car is running. The two came together after Peter Gibbons suggested Reg have Brad Graham drive for him. Brad Graham's been in it for a number of road course races, and here he is at Gwartha running up near the front. That's right. Brad had to park his own car for lack of funding, but he's a super shoe when he gets the right opportunity. So now it's teammates. J.R. Fitzpatrick in the Schick Hydro Chevy, the 84, leading the full home hardware Chevy of Don Johnson Jr. in the National Exhaust number 7 of Pete Shepard running in third. Well, a lot of action throughout the field, but up front, we've got to keep something in mind, something we found out early today. Don Thompson Jr. will be released from the four car by John Fitzpatrick at the end of this season. So Thompson, he's been running good of late, but he sure would like to lead this ride with a win here at Cortha. And remember, seven championships while driving for John Fitzpatrick. The leader in 2010, the points leader, DJ Kennington, has been struggling. He's back in 18th since taking on left sides that last pit stop. Tom, something up. Fellas, the entire number 17 Castrol team being a lot of uneasiness right now. They made their pit stop, of course, for fuel and tires. A lot of others haven't made stops, but they find themselves mired back in the field right now. There's a lot of head shaking, a lot of pacing, and a lot of worrying going on right now as DJ Kennington tries to tiptoe his way delicately through the field. Well, very concerned crew, but you know what? The you got to have confidence in your driver and your setup. But the, the lefts will start to come in when the air pressure builds up. And you know that that young fellow inside that race car has only one focus, and that's getting that car far enough forward without wrecking it to win this championship. We talked about bonus points a little bit earlier. DJ Kennington picking up five for leading lap number one. He's led a total of 78 laps. Now J.R. Fitzpatrick has picked up five bonus points of his own for leading a lap. But he's only led nine laps so far, so Darren Fitzpatrick has to stay out front quite a bit longer to try and make up that ground. And the 36 of Shannon Harding goes around one more time, and the caution flag comes out once again. That'll bunch the field, and this is something that J.R. Fitzpatrick did not want to see. Well, it's maybe time to come down pit road and put that final set of tires on. It's a little early, but Simone is in just to do a, a chassis adjustment and fuel. And out of second spot comes the four of Don Thompson Jr. Todd standing by. Home hardware Chevy along pit road looks like routine service with two left side tires this time by. Smooth stop right now for Sandy Hamilton and the team. Well, no mistakes there. Five off, five on, and the four car is down and away. Very important to get those lug nuts tightened at this point in the season. More importantly, at this point in the race, too, isn't it? Well, being the season finale, you don't want to have any mess-ups on pit road this last race of the year. Specifically for the four car, this is his last ride with that team. No mistakes. They give him everything he needs to win the race. Working lap 106, restart number four. J.R. Fitzpatrick gets on the gas. He's got Pete Shepard up on the outside. Fitzpatrick's going to lead him into one. But look at Shepard diving in on the outside, and Hathaway's in through the grass. Wow, up through the gearbox on this restart. Cautions breed cautions. We got cars all over the place, and DJ Kennington gets a spot from the 15. Yeah, look who just avoided that incident. Your points leader, DJ Kennington. That all unfolded right in front of him. He jumped to the outside and stayed clean, but Pete Shepard, the National Exhaust Dodge, working the outside of the Schick Hydro Chevy of J.R. Fitzpatrick. Shepard, after being involved in that incident early in the race, will lead this lap and take over top spot as he'll duck down in front of the number 84 of Fitzpatrick. Well, Fitzpatrick pedaled that Chevrolet for all it was worth off of turn four. 
he got all kinds of squirrely, and he had to let Shepard go. I have to mention, too, on that late last restart, the 77 of Isabel Trombley picked up the VTEC free pass award. Yet again, he records this speed. Will this race for fourth, the 9 and the 19 of Graham. Graham giving that thing a dynamite ride today. He's holding off Dilly, the 9 on the outside. And looking back through the running order, the 17 of DJ Kennington came into this one as your points leader. He's sitting in 12th position. So if the race, race were to end now, it would be very close, but likely J.R. Fitzpatrick would be your championship winner. And look there, the 60, Ron Beauchamp Jr. been to pit road. Chris Gubion made some adjustments, and that car is back up the full song. Absolutely. He qualified on the outside of the front row coming into this one. And uh, the 60 car doing very, very well through the mid portion of this race. And there is some talk to Chris Gubion and Ron Beauchamp Jr. parting ways after this race. There's a lot of silly season stuff going on at the end of 2010, almost more so than any other season. Well, this has been a tough year on crew, sponsors, and, and car owners. You know, you, it's a performance-driven game. If you don't win, you can't gap garner the sponsorship. So, and if you can't win, if you haven't got the right crew, chief and crew. And we got one around the 13 of Trevor Monahan. Caution flag flies, and a couple cars get together up in one and two. That's the three car. Jason Hathaway leaving the scene. Stephen Matthews up against the wall. He just kissed it. So not too, too much damage, and that Ford able to drive away. Looks like just racing into one and two, racing for the same piece of real estate. So the seventh car of Pete Shepard down pit road. While the crew chief making a good call here, they get fresh right side tires on that car and get ready to run to the finish. Chick Hydro car of J.R. Fitzpatrick along pit road. It'll be two right side tires and another right rear adjustment. The 17 Castrol Edge car of D.J. Kennington has been complaining about how tight his car has been since they changed left sides. It's the two right side tires that will be replaced this time. They're having a real good look at that right front. Charlie gives a thumbs up. That's Dave White telling D.J. everything's fine with the right front. Right side's on. And they'll win the race off the pit road. You can see J.R. Fitzpatrick having to back up to get out from behind the 17. Ron Sheridan, your new leader here in Kawartha. Ron Sheridan and his Bell 4 Restoration number 52 Ford leads the final event of the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series here at Kawartha Speedway as we get set for restart number 5 here on lap 132. Sheridan choosing the inside. Sean McGlynn up high as the green flag back up in the air. Two by two, they file into turn number one. Ronnie Sheridan will get the best of the top spot down. Look at him fly the nose of that 52 going into turn three. And Donald Chisholm following through in that hole as well as we ride on board with a snap on Dodge of Jason Hathaway. Boy, he's had his troubles here today. He's involved in an incident down through the grass. So we've hit the home hardware halfway update. We've had seven leaders here so far today. Ten lead changes, believe it or not. So it's been a very racy race. Well, it's been ultra competitive and everybody's going for broke. It is the last race of the year. They've got all winter to fix these race cars. Absolutely, and it's, it's a good boost to your confidence. If you win this one going into the off season, you want to think, yes, I've won one. Now we can reset our sights for a championship in 2011. Great racing up front. Ronnie Sheridan holding off the 89 of Chisholm. 115 laps to go. Chisholm working hard on the back end of that 52. But we'd like to take this chance to thank Canadian Tire for once again supporting the best racers in Canada. And a big thank you goes out to Brad Moran and Mandy Hoffermel at the series office. Also a big tip of the hat to Tim Ellis for all of his efforts. And of course, all the NASCAR officials who patrol pit road week in and week out. Well, it really is a thankless job right from Tim to, to the Trevor, the race director guys. You know, they put on a great show, and if they make a call that's questionable, the racers get down on them. But one thing about it, the racers do appreciate all the effort they do put into the series so they can have such a great hobby on the weekend. Absolutely, and a wonderful race like we're having right here. The 89 of Donald Chisholm takes over top spot. Here comes the 7 of Pete Shepard, the young lion, working hard underneath the number 3 of Jason Hathaway. That's for third position. Shepard certainly making a statement here today. He's been run over once. He's made pit stops. They've put fiberglass pieces back together, and that car is still a bullet. Gary Max in the 02 Dickies Ford. 
working on Hathaway. Hathaway now stuffed up in that outside groove and unable to make any forward bite. So give that position to the 0-2 of Kerry Mixon. Here comes Shepard.